Jordi, we're less than uh, two weeks from uh, the New Year League season, uh, which looks like uh, the most competitive of the last decade by far. Um, two teams more, 306 uh, games, seven double weeks, uh, and also great additions from the teams. Your thoughts? It's exciting. It's, uh, as always, a little bit nervous because when we are start about to start the season, it's always uh, we're nervous we're going to have everything ready. But as you said, that will be a very interesting season for us because we are opening a new path once again with enlarging the number of teams by having more presence in key countries like France and Germany, which give us an idea about what, what will be the future of the Euro. So we'll be more games, at the end will be four more games, and I think that working together with the union of the players, we managed to have a, a good calendar. So, and then the, the effort that our owners uh, made this summer by uh, having these, uh, those impressive rosters, I think that is one more um, proof of the strong commitment of our owners with, with the game. So I think that we all have to be grateful to them. So the plan is uh, to see how the current uh, format uh, works for a few years and then, you know, add another two teams to go for 20? This is difficult because um, having 20 teams in the EuroLeague will make the league incompatible with the domestic leagues. And I don't think this is the right approach at this moment. So, with 20 clubs, it's impossible to, to have a calendar that can allow to play at the same time domestic leagues. So, I believe that the changes that we'll have in the future will be more on uh, giving uh, more a long-term and a stable license to a club with these three remaining spots that we have at this moment. I think that we, our, our, our idea is that in a couple of three years, we'll have 16 teams with a long-term contract, like the one we have now in Pieros and Panathinaikos, and two teams coming from the Eurocup. This is our final design. And I think the changes that we will introduce in the next couple of years will be in this direction. Is there any chance that in the near future we could see a third the Greek team? Well, there is. Uh, fortunately, now we have a chance because we have Greek team in the in the Euro Cup, and Euro Cup will become the the door and the gate to the to the Euro League. So, qualifying, uh, playing the Euro Cup, and playing the Euro Cup final is means to have a spot guarantee for the following season in the Euro League. Uh, if we are talking about a, a long-term license in the Euro League. We don't see in this moment, I am not saying in the future, but this moment we do not see any team that has the infrastructure and the strength and the budget level to compete in a competition where the average budget is around 24-25 million euros. Yeah. So we do not see this in this moment, but you never can say what can happen in four or five years time. But still, which is relevant is that the Greek team that has the dream to play the EuroLeague now they have a door open, something in the last year they didn't have, because they didn't want to play Euro. Euro game. This year is for the first time uh, in the history of the competition, one of 11 teams with a 10-year contract uh, will not participate in the National League. I'm referring to Olympia Cross. This is something that concerns you, and I mean for many reasons. One, one could be more rest. Uh, comparing to the other teams? I think that uh, this is something very unique, uh, very extraordinary, and I think the reasons why our, how this happened is not in our area of responsibilities. So I believe that this, no one can consider this as a, as a strategy for the future. We are not thinking in this way. So we are more thinking on that this is something that for the good of the Greek basketball should be solved. But this depends on the Greek uh, league, the Greek federation, and the Greek teams, not us. But I don't, I don't think that will affect the EuroLeague in any way. You are here uh, also to announce the new TV deal with Nova for the next three years. Uh, what this new agreement could uh, bring and could offer to, to the Greek teams? Well, 
first of all, we extended the, this partnership and, uh, and uh, for uh, four more years. Uh, we have already partnership with Nova for, for, for 15. I think this kind of relationship are built on trust, in quality, in commitment, and that's helped us a lot in, in uh, the promotion of our game. So Nova is doing a, an unbelievable effort to make our game more spectacular, more close to our fans, and it is something that um, is cannot be, let's say, um, assessed by economics. It's much. It's more about how Nova is helping us to increase the popularity of the game, and this is something amazing. Also, you're here for the second uh, uh, year in a row to honor uh, Yanakopoulos' family and to to follow the international tournament. You know, but unfortunately, this year in. Uh, Thanasis Yanakopoulos was added, you know, to the list of absent uh, great men who helped, you know, European basketball develop. Your thoughts about uh, these two men, these two brothers? Well, I always said that basketball never will be enough grateful to the, this family for what they did uh, in the last 30-35 years in our history. So the contribution of uh, Pablo Santanasis to the, to the game uh, in, in times where that was not very common, was not very often, the vision they had at that time, I think for us, was probably the first step or something absolutely necessary to understand why we are at the level we are at this moment. And probably people don't remember what happened in the 90s or the late 80s, so, but that was fundamental to understand this, this, this evolution. So I, I, I came here because unfortunately every year we had bad news. Last year was Pablo's passing away, and it was Tanasis. I had a lot of respect, a very good relation with both of them. And unfortunately, this is this is life. But at least I can pay tribute to them coming to this event. According to the Euroleague rules, this year the penalties will be tighter on the behavior uh, of the fans. Uh, this is something that concerns you when you think about, uh, you know, uh, the very often irritable Greek audience. I think it's not about fines, it's not about sanctions, it's about education, it's about culture. So we do not believe, we are not thinking that we are increasing the fines. We just introduce more rules to be sure that we play the game in a respectful environment. This is what is the, 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 the code of conduct about. It's not about fines. So we have the rules for, uh, for this respect to be sure that the players develop their, their, their job in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a healthy environment. And last but not least, uh, it's been almost an entire year since the loss of former General Secretary of FIBA, Patrick Bauman, uh, and several months since his successor, Andreas uh, Zanglis, took over. So far, as much as we know, there was no meetings between uh, the no. two sides. There was uh, no meetings, but I, I think it's, it's uh, logical to understand yes. that when Andreas, for these sad reasons, became uh, General Secretary, I, I imagine that he had in front of him thousands of things that he, he needed to address, fix, and to be involved in. And basically, he had a World Cup in front of him, nine, just nine months after he took uh, the responsibility of being general secretary. So I cannot imagine that uh, Euroleague could be a priority in all, all these in all these situations. So I, I my belief is I never thought that was something strange or or bad. I just understood that it makes sense what what FIBA is doing. I think they did a good job in in, in China. I think the, 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 the World Cup was a, was a first class event and I have to congratulate we have to congratulate them because it's good for, for, for basketball. And I, I'm sure that in the in now when he will have time to rest and, and to be more addressed to the 
knew the other problems, but we have time to talk. Actually, he said that he respects uh, a lot EuroLeague as the most important uh, club's uh, tournament uh, in the whole world. Uh, and he said that uh, the whole issue must be addressed, you know, as a, as a member of a big basketball family. That's a very good statement. Because one year ago, the statement was that EuroLeague is not part of the family. So we are always available. We, uh, anytime I've been asked and I will be asked to, to sit down, to talk, I, I will go immediately because I believe that uh, today the situation is clear. We have, uh, we have different, uh, different uh, institutions in basketball. Each one has their own responsibility and it's time not to take, uh, take responsibilities from the other side. It's time to see the way how to can make the game better by cooperation with us. So probably five years ago was more FIBA trying to recover what they believe was to recover power. This is done, it's passed. I think now the situation is different and we believe that we have to sit down and, and, and we will, and for sure we will, and talk about how to cooperate and how to make the, 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 the game better, each one in their responsibilities. And, uh, and I believe that, that uh, I'm sure that we have a big room for that.